Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be installing a new radiator in my car. So most people go with Mishimoto radiators, and I can see why. For the most part, they're pretty good, um, aside from some minor fitment issues with the fans. The OEM radiator is a little bit more expensive than a Mishimoto one. I think the Mishimotos are like 260, 275-ish. Uh, this one on Prime MR2, I think was like 325. I decided to go with an OEM radiator because they work really, really good. Um, I know people don't necessarily talk about it all the time, but the stop cooling system on these cars are freaking amazing. With some proper maintenance, they can last forever. I know a radiator won't last forever, but I just wanted to give you guys this example. This is my other 93 MR2. And as you can plainly see, this is actually the original radiator on the car. So it's over 20 years old and still going strong. Taking out the radiator should be pretty straightforward. I'll have to take off these brackets. Um, the fan should hopefully come out with it. I'll find out. I've never taken one off an MR2 before. The AC condenser is going to come out. I'll have to unplug some wires and then I'll drain the coolant. We're going to start off by draining the cooling system, which is simple. I'm going to hook up this hose to right here, open the nozzle and the coolant should start coming on out. It's nice that you can see that the coolant is pretty clear which should be expected as the swap was done less than a year ago. I should point out, it's not necessary to use the tube when you drain out the coolant, but it just makes it easier so you're not spilling it everywhere. I got everything unbolted so the radiator is almost ready to come out. The last thing I have to do is just disconnect the hoses which is honestly kind of a pain on this car. The wires are kind of in the way but right here is a hose that connects the radiator to the hard line. That was a pain but the radiator is finally out. Just wanted to give you guys a quick tip. When you're taking off the hoses, what you can actually do is unscrew these bolts that hold this into place. Then what that's gonna allow you to do is gain access to the back of the hose. And then you could actually just pry a flat head under there because what happens a lot of the time is that the hoses end up getting stuck to it. So you can break it loose with the flat head if you decide to use this method, just be very careful because this hose has mounting points here and down here. So if you flex this metal tube too much, you could actually crack it. So just be very conscious of what you're doing. I still got to take out the condenser. I'm going to switch over the parts for the radiators and then take the condenser out. I'm going to compare the differences between the NA radiator like my car has because my car is an NA chassis versus the turbo radiator. Pretty much the main difference is that the NA radiator is considerably smaller than the turbo radiator. Everything else though, pretty much the same. Like right here is the spot for the sensor, other spot for the sensor. Also, if you have an NA radiator and switch to a turbo radiator, you're gonna have to get different fans. So this is the NA radiator, this is the turbo radiator. I think the main difference is that the turbo radiator fans are slightly bigger and the mounting points right here are at different points to accommodate the bigger size. Putting the coolant hoses on are going to be a pain. So what I'm going to do is install the radiator, put the hoses on so I have extra room to work, then I'm going to put the fans on. After that, it's just a matter of bleeding the coolant and the car should be good. But before we get to that, I still have to take out the AC compressor. Oof. All right, we finally got the AC condenser out. One thing I would like to say is that the AC lines were already cut on this car, so it's not like I was letting 
um, refrigerant out into the ozone because I know some people might be concerned about that. So as to the person who removed the AC, I don't know if they took it to a shop or if they just let it out, but yeah, I didn't do that is the point. It looks like it's time to put everything back together. I transferred the stuff from one radiator to another. I took out this whole thing, the AC condenser. I also took out these extra lines. These are for the AC system. Uh, some of you may wonder why I'm taking it out. And the reason's pretty simple. Um, when I got the car, the AC wasn't working because the compressor was taken out. And also at about the mid uh, midway line in this car, the AC lines were actually cut. So I don't really wanna go through the hassle of making the AC work again, especially when it's gonna be a race car. So it just kind of seems counterproductive to me. In terms of keeping myself cool, depending on the event, I may get like a cool suit, but for the most part, I don't think it's gonna be necessary, at least in my case. It's time to put everything back together now. I'm actually gonna start with the hoses. These are just some cheap silicone hoses I got off of eBay. And I honestly got them because it's it's a coolant hose. Um, they should all pretty much be the same. The only time I've ever had issues with any like coolant hoses is just ones that were old and worn. Quick note on the coolant hoses. I was actually able to get a full kit for like 50 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. So yeah, here's the full kit. I already have the other two hoses on the car and they even came with the hose clamp. So if anyone's interested, Hit up eBay. All right, radiator is gonna go back in now. Oh, that's a tight, That this is such a tighter fit in comparison to the NA radiator. There you go, that's one, and then that's two, woo. Radiator's in, now I just have to put the hoses. As you can see, it's already attached there and it's in more, so I have a little bit more leeway. I think it should be pretty easy just to slip the radiator hose on. Admittedly, it was kind of a pain still, even though I put the hose in beforehand, but I got both of the hoses on. As you can see, right there's one hose, right there's the other hose on. I just have to tighten down that last little clamp. After I get that on, I just literally have to put the fans on, the hood latch, the top radiator brackets, mounting brackets, and then I can fire this thing up and bleed it. Fan number one. Fan number two is going on. Boom. <laughs> Gonna put the nuts in finger tight. For the record, I actually got brand new hardware for this. I'm going all out on this car, sort of. Got everything back in. As you can see, the AC condenser is gone because I don't have AC in the car, but it's time to fill everything with fluids. Now in the front, the only hose I have to hook up to is right here, which is on the radiator. There's also a bleeder valve right here for the heater core, but my car doesn't actually have the heater core hooked up, so don't have to worry about it. My apologies for the fan, but you can see there's a bunch of air in the system still. The temperature is looking good, which uh, I'm a fan of. Don't want any overheating. So the coolant's not going down as much as I thought it would. Um, something I didn't stop to think about is the simple fact that because the heater core was bypassed on this car, there's less capacity, obviously. I just didn't think it would be that much less because I put about a gallon of water and I've been, I was going to put more coolant in to start, but I think I might have put too much water. So what I was just doing was actually just running it through the revs. Um, the idea is if you rev the engine up and down, maybe it can get some of those air bubbles to come up. What's up guys? It's actually a couple days later. Um, I honestly just got really tired and stopped filming. But anyways, the car is good to go. I've driven it around with no issues. I feel pretty good in saying I got all the air out of the system as it's not overheating and the temperatures are staying consistent. I will say the true test is going to be when I take it out on the track to see if it still has overheating issues. As I mentioned before, the heater core isn't hooked up, so the car can't hold as much coolant in the system. So I am kind of concerned as to how that will impact it. If I think it's gonna be an issue, 
I will probably just hook it back up, but for the moment, I'm just gonna leave it alone. I just gotta say the car looks so much better with this new hardware in here. Next thing I'll do is uh, start cleaning up this wiring. So that video should be dropping soon. Hope you guys enjoy this little video and definitely stay tuned for future videos. Um, I'm in the process of building the exhaust. This is actually the old exhaust right now. As I mentioned, the wiring, so big things are definitely coming. Also, if you could like, comment, subscribe, or share the video, I would greatly appreciate that. And as always, have a good day.